EC is going to have problems, all right? So it's nothing major with the Sherman S. These larger wheels do take a while to dial in and uh, it's been awesome. Never once have I uh, not been able to go down and jump on the wheel, ready to ride every time. So, the thing I've noticed in particular... <laughs> What's up everyone, Jono here. This video is meant to be a conclusion for my Sherman S series, so check out the full playlist for all of my reviews, analysis, tutorials. Alrighty, let's get stuck into it. This is a final check-in for my veteran Sherman S. I recently did a service on it to get it ready for sale. Looking forward to the uh, links coming up. And a few issues came up, as it will with any wheel. So I'm going to go over those, but also just changes I've made to the wheel and uh, it's been awesome. Never once have I uh, not been able to go down and jump on the wheel, ready to ride every time. So the first big change is this off-road tire I put on. And I know I, I was a big advocate for the Michelin Pilot Street 2 tire. And that's a great predictable linear round tire. But I've really had a change of mind on the off-road knobby tire, really surprising. And the secret for me was to experiment with the tire pressures. And that meant going down to 24 PSI for my body weight. And it's made it far more predictable and less riding on a knife's edge. So I really enjoy just cutting across the grass whenever I want now, like <laughs> not a problem. Far more, just far more versatility. And it rips so hard. I don't know what it is, a bit more gyro, just giving it a bit of extra stability. So um, you're joining me on my ride to the farmer's market this morning. So, you know, this is the purpose of the Sherman S for me. It's a car replacer. So that means going and visiting uh, friends, family, shopping, errands, gym, that sort of thing, all on the Sherman S. That's not to say uh, I use the e-scooter e for some tasks, but compared to an EUC, man, it's just terrible. Uh, it's lots of issues. And let's see, I had the uh, tire wear out and it blew up mid-ride. And that was after not much distance on it at all. Alrighty, so I'm just going to jump in here because I waffle on a bit about the e-scooter. There's too many issues to cover, but basically I've done less distance and had far more issues with the Enokim Ox Super. And of course the one wheel for shorter trips. <laughs> now besides the uh, shorter... <laughs> uh, what a legend. Now besides the uh, off-road knobby tyre, I've gone for the upgraded Levercom foot plates and that's from the nylon spiked pedals and the reason for that is because I'm selling the EUC so I sold off the uh, the nylon over as a separate package so I'm looking for 3900 bucks at the moment but not Lots of clicks, not too much interest. We'll see how it sells. Um, and I'll put an update in the pinned comment below. So it's quite early morning, not much traffic around. Beautiful day for riding. Alrighty, so I just got my list on my phone here. The old wrist mount. Yeah, so I had a bit of a suspension leak. Did the video on that. Uh, get it ready for the next owner. However, a few long-term issues did crop up with the Sherman S. And now any EEC is going to have problems, all right? So if anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying to you, but it's nothing major with the Sherman S. So I noticed uh, the motor power cable was cracking, the cover on it. And then I did strip one bolt, which was dumb because I did the torque spec guide here and I didn't follow, I just Thought I could go off memory, went to 16 newton meters on the top connector and uh, dripped that one. So always refer to notes for things like that. 
And now an interesting one was the top cover was delaminating. And I do use silicone to seal that up. So it did take a bit of extra force to separate it. And that could be um, just the extra stiction pulled it apart. So I've contacted e Riders waiting word back to see if that's a warranty issue. The mud guard is starting to hit the stand for some people, including me. So my theory is that it's slowly uh, creeping, like the plastic is slowly warping and creeping and reducing the distance between them. So I also chucked it in the boot of a car and had the had the stand come out a bit crooked after that. So it's listing to one side. Uh, a bit disappointing also checking if that could be a warranty issue that we can fix up. Alrighty, so on reassembly I got a BL error, which is the left battery error, saying that it's potentially overcharged, balance issue, and uh, that was a bit of a surprise. So it had been torn down for a couple of days, and so the first thing I did was a uh, multimedia voltage check. I checked the fuse, it was fine. And then I checked uh, the wires and I found that one of the black communication wires had been pinched and I just put a bit of tape over that. Oh, it's just a bit, a bit busy here so I'm, I'm going to cut to a quieter section of road. Alright, so I found a bit of an open section here where I can let it rip show off this knobby tire speed a little bit. Just look at it go. <laughs> so at higher speeds it does fall into turns still, but not below around uh, 55, 60 k's cornering. So you gotta be really ripping on a private road, of course, to get that issue. And it just goes hard. And I do see just then in hard braking, it can dive a little bit to one side. Just that knife edge uh, aspect still comes through a little bit. Alrighty, so I was just talking about the battery problem and uh, all those things I tried. So the other thing was I plugged in one battery pack at a time. Oh, let's get some seated. And so just ran the left battery, turned it on, balancing fine, unplugged it, plugged in the right battery, turned it on, balancing just fine. So a few options there. And then I uh, did both battery packs. And when I did that, it was, uh, error was gone. So I rode it tentatively for a uh, few hundred Ks and seemed to sort itself out. Alrighty, so I just ducked off that busy, faster road. And so the next section I was uh, just chatting about my mate in California, John Wall. He's also in the Sherman S for about a year now. So I got his ride report and he's saying one of his favorite EUCs ever. And oh, I'll get back to that in a sec, but let's do a uh, slow-mo stair drop here so you can see the knobby tire performing. Alrighty, hopefully that looks cool. So I was just chatting about my buddy uh, John Wall and his Sherman S experience after one year. So he said he had to replace his bearings pretty early on and uh, that was a warranty job. No problem since then, going well. But he also had to replace the rear tail light, which is a bit different. So his, uh, his front, left LED is also looking a bit dodgy. So it's a few strange issues there from John, but uh, Jason at E-Wheels took care of him under warranty. So great stuff from Jason. Now I'm just going to hit this off-road here. 
Yes, hey. another reason I love the, uh, the off-road. A few benefits, the large knobs make it a bit more compliant over smaller bumps versus the uh, street tire. And, and it also trains tracks less, which is really interesting. Uh, makes it a much more pleasant ride. And the other thing is that it is worse under braking, hard braking I've noticed in particular. <laughs> so a few downsides um, with that. And it's almost a sad thing to be selling my Sherman Earth now because these larger wheels do take a while to dial in and I finally got the Sherman Earth just the way I like it with the pads moved forwards and uh, the brake pads right up against my back there. And also Nobby's a bit new, new uh, tire changes up the ride completely, new fun there. But it's been a great EUC, few issues, nothing has stopped me from riding it though. Looking forward towards the links though and the whole new video series to share with everyone. So thank you so much everyone, ride safe and I'll catch you next time.